Emerging technologies are disrupting old paradigms and unleashing new opportunities. And Oracle has embedded innovative technologies in every aspect of the cloud, enabling many companies to reimage their business process and experience along with it. And also, Oracle is rated world's number one database and is now autonomous, which eventually allows the enterprises to innovate at the speed of a startup. So hi guys, this is Vaishnavi from Edureka and I welcome you all to the session on Oracle interview questions. So in this session, we'll be focusing mainly on how to crack an Oracle interview. Okay, so we have a set of questions where we'll be discussing about what exactly you need to do in order to back this job rule. So before we get started, let's take a quick look at the agenda for today. So first of all, I'll be discussing a basic interview questions uh, that is uh, basic Oracle interview questions followed by which I'll be discussing the SQL questions that might be asked in an interview and we'll end this session by taking a look at the PL SQL interview questions which will definitely be asked. So let's get started. Knowledge of SQL is a must because the demand for SQL expertise is high and is valued in the market. Oracle is one such very popular secure database that is widely used across multinational companies. So this video will help you out and it will cover most of the frequently asked interview questions and it will also help you brush up your knowledge about Oracle before you attend an interview. Okay, so if you are a fresher or an experienced, this is the right platform for you which will help you to start your preparation. Okay, so let's begin by understanding the first question. So the first question I have for you guys is how will you differentiate between Varkar and Varkar 2? So both these Varkar and Varkar 2 are the Oracle data types which are used to store character strings of variable length. So in order to point out the major differences, I would say Varkar can store characters up to 2000 bytes, whereas Varkar 2 can store characters up to 4000 bytes. So this is the major difference between a Varkar and Varkar 2. And also Varkar holds the space for characters that are defined during the declaration even if all of them are not used. So it holds extra space. Whereas Varkar 2 will release the unused space. So it doesn't hold the space for any character to be added. So it will just release the unused space. Okay, so these are the major differences between a Varkar and Varkar 2. So the next question is what are the components of logical database structure in Oracle database? So there are two logical database structure in Oracle database. So they are namely table spaces and database schema objects. So what is a table space? A database mainly contains the logical storage unit called the table spaces. This table space is a set of related logical structures. To be more precise, table space groups are related to the logical structures altogether. So this is about the table space guys. Now we have a database schema objects. A schema is actually a collection of a database objects that are owned by a specific user. The objects might include tables, indices, indexes, views, stored procedures and many more. And in Oracle, the user is the account and the schema is the object. And it is also possible in the database platforms to have a schema without a user being specified. So these are the components of the logical database structure. All right, moving ahead to the next question, we have explain an Oracle table. So table is actually a basic unit of a database, right? So what exactly is a table in Oracle database? So a table is a basic unit of a data storage in Oracle database. A table contains all the accessible information of a user in the form of rows and columns. So in order to create a new table in the database, you can use create table statement. So first all you have to do is you have to name that table and define its columns and data types for each column. All right, so this is exactly how you can create a table guys. Here the table name specifies the name of the table that you want to create and column will have a specific range that might be 1 to n or 0 to n. It specifies the number of columns which you want to add in the table. Here, every column must have a data type and should either be defined as a null or a not null. If in case the value is left blank, it is treated as a null as default. 
So this is exactly how uh, you can create a table in Oracle database. Moving ahead to the next question, explain the relationship among database, table space, and data file. An Oracle database possesses one or more logical storage units called table space. Each table space in Oracle database consists of one or more files called the data files. And these table spaces collectively store the entire data of the databases. Talking about the data files, these are the physical structure that confirms with the operating system as to which Oracle program is running. I think you guys understood what is the relationship between these three. Now moving ahead to the next question. What are the various Oracle database objects? When you talk about database, uh, it would be obvious that he or she wants to know about the objects. So what are the different database objects? They are namely tables, table space, views, indexes and synonyms. Now what is a table? This is the set of elements which are organized in the vertical or horizontal manner, which has rows and columns. All right. Now talking about table space. It is a logical storage unit in Oracle database views views are a virtual table which are derived from one or more table indexes. This is a performance tuning method in order to process the records synonym is a name for tables. All right. So these are the various Oracle database objects. Now the next question is explain about the analyze command in Oracle. This analyze command is used to perform various functions on the index table or a cluster. The list here specifies the usage of analyze command in Oracle. So this analyze command is used to identify migrated and chained rows of the table or a cluster. It is also used to validate the structure of an object and also helps in collecting the statistics about the object which are used by the user and then stored onto the data dictionary. It also helps in deleting statistics that are used by an object from the data dictionary. So this is where analyze command is used and uh, I think you guys understood how exactly analyze command works in Oracle. Now the next question is what is a join and what are the different types of joins that are used in writing subqueries? A join is used to compare and combine two or more tables in the database. This means that you can literally join and return the specific rows of data. Now talking about the different types of joins that are used in SQL. There are three types of joins that are used to write the subqueries. They are self join outer join and equi join self join is a join in which a table is joined with itself especially when a table has a foreign key which references to its own primary key in the same join all right now talking about outer join an outer join helps to find and return matching data and some dissimilar data from the tables equi join an equi join is a join with a join condition containing an equality operator an equi join returns only the rows that have equivalent values for the specified columns. So these are the different types of joins that are used to write the queries in SQL. Now moving ahead to the next question, we have raw data type in Oracle. I think people don't know what raw is. Raw is a data type in Oracle that is used to store a variable length binary data or byte string values. The maximum size of a raw in a given table can be 32,767 bytes. Okay, so this is huge. And you might get confused as to when to use raw, varchar, or varchar2. So let me point out the major differences between them. PLSQL does not recognize the data types and hence it cannot have any conversions when raw data is transferred to different systems. So this data type can only be queried or it can be inserted in a table. All right, moving ahead to the next question. We have what is the use of aggregate function in Oracle? An aggregate function in Oracle is a function where values of multiple rows or records are joined together to get a single value output. It performs summary operations on a set of values in order to provide a single value. So there are several aggregation functions that you can use in your code to perform calculations. 
So here are some of the common aggregate functions in use. We have average count and sum. All right now moving ahead to the next question explain temporal data types in Oracle. So Oracle mainly provides these temporal data types. They namely date data type timestamp data type and interval data type date data type helps in providing different formats of dates whereas timestamp data type has different formats of the timestamp interval data type holds the interval between the date and the time right now the next question is what is a view a view is a logical table based on one or more tables or views a view can also be referred as a user defined database object that is used to store the results of a SQL query that can be referenced later in the course of time. Views cannot store the data physically, but it can store them as a virtual table. Hence, it can be referred as a logical table. The corresponding tables upon which the views are signified are called as base tables and this base table does not contain data. So the next question is how to store pictures onto the database. So how can you store an image onto a database using Oracle? So if you can rephrase this question and ask is it possible to store an image onto the database? The answer is yes. So it is possible to store images or pictures onto the database by using a long raw data type. So this data type is used to store binary data of length 2 GB. Although the table can have only one long raw data type. Okay, so moving on to the next question we have where do you use decode and case statements? So when exactly can you use this decode and case statements in Oracle? Both these statements decode and case will work similar to the if then else statement and also they're considered as the alternatives for each of them. So these functions are used in Oracle for data value transformation. So do note this guys. So these statements that is decode and case statements are used in Oracle for the purpose of data value transformation, right? I've even given an example for this. So here I'm going to be selecting order number from the table and I'm going to decode this particular query. I'm going to decode the status ordered O package P shipped and arrived. So these are the values I'm going to be decoding from orders, right? Now talking about case, I'm going to be selecting order number from the table and when the status is O, then it will say it is ordered and when the status is P, it will say packed and when the status is S, it will say it is shipped else it will say it is arrived and I'm going to end this. So both these commands will display the order number with their respective status. I hope you guys are clear with this. Now moving on to the next question. What do you mean by merge in Oracle and how can you merge two tables? A merge statement is used to merge the data from two tables subsequently. It selects the data from the source table and then inserts or updates it in the other table based on the condition that is provided in the query. It is also useful in data warehousing applications. Now the next question I have for you guys is what is the data type of a dual table? Now what is a dual table? A dual table is basically a one column table that is present in the Oracle database. This table has a single varchar column called dummy which has the value of X. So the data type of this dual table is varchar 2. So these are the basic Oracle questions that you'll be asked. Moving on to the next module, I have SQL interview questions. So let's begin by understanding integrity constraints. So explain about integrity constraints. An integrity constraint is actually a declaration that is defined as a business rule for a table column. These are used to ensure accuracy and consistency of data in the database. It can also be called as a declarative way in order to define a business rule for a tables column. So there are a few types of uh, integrity constraint in SQL. So they're namely domain integrity and referential integrity. All right now moving on to the next question. What is SQL and also describe the types of SQL statements. So SQL or SQL stands for structured query language. 
SQL is used to communicate with the server in order to access manipulate and control data. So there are namely five types of SQL statements which are available. So they are namely select which is used for data retrieval insert update delete merge which are data manipulation language create alter drop rename truncate which are data definition language that is DDL commit rollback and save point are transaction control statements and the last we have grant and revoke. So these are data control language statements. So moving on to the next question we have briefly explain about the literal and also give an example as to where it can be used. A literal is referred as a string that contains a character number or a date that is included in the select list and it should not be a column name or a column alias and also do note that date and character literals must be enclosed within the single quotes. Whereas you don't have to do that for the number literals. Now say for example if I have select last name I'm going to be specifying the job ID. These are joins as the employee details from the table employee. In this case is a is a literal. So I hope you guys understood this now moving on to the next question we have how to display row numbers with the records. In order to display the row numbers along with their record numbers you can do this. So all you need to do is select the row numbers from the fields name that is specified from the table. All right. So this query will display the row numbers and the field values from the given table. So this is how simple you can write the queries in SQL. Now the next question is what is the difference between SQL and iSQL plus. So I've pointed down the major differences between these two. SQL is a language whereas iSQL plus is an environment. Now talking about the justifications SQL characters and date column headings are left justified and number column headings are right justified. Whereas in iSQL plus the default heading justification is in the center. So you don't have left a line or right a line. All right. Now SQL cannot be abbreviated whereas iSQL plus can be abbreviated because it's an environment and also you have all necessary functionalities. SQL does not have a continuation character whereas iSQL plus has a hash as a continuation character if the command is longer than one line right now SQL uses functions in order to perform some formatting operations whereas iSQL plus uses commands to format data. Okay, I think you guys are clear with the differences between SQL and iSQL plus. Now moving on to the next question. What are SQL functions and explain the different types of SQL functions. SQL functions are actually the very powerful feature of SQL. These can take in arguments but it always returns some value. There are two distinct types of SQL functions that are available. They're namely single row functions and multiple row functions. So let's see what is single row functions. So these single row functions operate on a single row in order to give one result per row. All right. So there are different types of single row functions that are available. They are namely character number date conversion and general. Now talking about multiple row functions. These functions operate on groups of rows in order to give one result per group of rows. Different types of multiple row functions would be average count max minimum sum variance and so on. Now moving on to the next question we have explained different types of general functions that are used in SQL. So the general functions that are available in uh, SQL are NBL and DL2 null if coalesce and conditional expressions. Now talking about NBL NBL converts the null value to an actual value. Now say for example if I have this command NBL of expression 1 and 2. If expression 1 is null then NVL function returns the value of expression 2. Now talking about NVL 2 I'm going to be considering the same expressions here expression 1 and 2 and if expression 1 is not null NVL 2 returns expression 2 and if expression 1 is null NVL 2 returns expression 3. So the argument expression 1 can have any data type. You can specify it like this that is NVL 2 expression 1 2 3 all right 
Now talking about null if as the name suggests it compares two expressions and returns null if they are equal else it will return the first expression if they are not equal. So null if expression one and two talking about coalesce. This returns the first non null expression in the expression list. So coalesce of expression one two it might go up to n. Now talking about the advantage of using this coalesce function. So I think most of you out there wouldn't know what coalesce is. Coalesce function can take multiple alternative values. So this is a notable advantage of coalesce. Now talking about conditional expressions. These conditional expressions provide the use of if then else logic within the SQL statement. For example, I would say case or a decode function. Now moving on to the next question we have what is a subquery and describe its types. A subquery is a select statement that is embedded in a clause of another select statement. A subquery can also be placed in clause like where having and from right. So here are a few tips before you start working with uh, the subquery. So I would call it as guidelines for using these subqueries. So uh, you should enclose the subqueries within parentheses. So so there might be a possibility that you might have forgotten to add parentheses. So it shouldn't happen when you're working with a subquery. Also place the subqueries in the right side of the comparison condition. So you should always place the subqueries onto the right side of the comparison condition. And also use single row operators with single row subqueries. Say if you use uh, single row operators with multi row subqueries, so it would be a mismatch, right? So use a single row operator with a single row subquery. And also use multiple row operators with multiple row subqueries. Now what are the different types of subqueries that are available? I think you guys must have guessed it by now. It is single row subquery and multi row subquery. Talking about single row subquery, these queries return only one row from the inner select statements. So, single row comparison operators would be equals, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and so on. Whereas, when I talk about multiple row subqueries, these are the queries that return more than one row from the inner select statement. So single row subquery selects only one row from the inner select statement and multiple rows selects more than one row from the inner select statement. You will also find multiple column subqueries that return more than one column from the inner select statement. So the operators or the examples for multiple row queries would be in any all. Now moving on to the next question I have what is the use of double ampersand in SQL queries and give an example for it. So you can use a double ampersand if you want to reuse the variable value without prompting the user each time. Now say for example if I have a select the employee number employee name and I'm going to use this double ampersand specify the column name from employee order by the column name. So here you can reuse the variable value without alerting the user each time. So here you can get the value of the employee name. Now the next question is describe VRA. VRA is basically an Oracle data type that is used to have column containing multi valued attributes and it can hold a bounded array of values. All VRAs consists of contiguous memory locations. Here the lowest address corresponds to the first element and the highest address corresponds to the last element. So each element in the VRA has an index associated with it just like the array. It has a maximum size that is max size and this can also be changed dynamically with the increasing number of elements. All right. So I think you guys are clear with what is VRA. Now moving on to the next question we have. What are the attributes of a cursor? So before we understand what are the attributes of a cursor, we'll see what is a cursor. A cursor is a pointer to the context area. When a SQL statement is processed, Oracle creates a memory area known as a context area. So this cursor is a pointer to this context area. It contains all information that is required for processing the statement. Now talking about the attributes of the cursor, each cursor has a set of attributes that enables an application program to test the safe of the cursor. So these attributes are namely 
is open found not found row count and many more so these attributes are used to determine whether the cursor is an open state or not all right so moving on to the next question we have what are the various constraints used in oracle so these are the various constraints that are used they namely null not null check and default so null is used to indicate that a particular column can contain null values not null indicates that a particular column cannot contain null values check helps in validating the values that are present in the given column to meet the specific criteria default it is used to indicate the value is assigned to a default value now moving on to the next question we have what is the fastest query method to fetch data from a table so the fastest query method to fetch data from a table is by using the row id so you can just use the row id and get the data from the table and a particular row can be fetched from a table using the row id so ids are unique and you can just easily fetch the data from the table all right now moving on to the next question what is the difference between cartesian join and cross join so the answer to this would be there is no such difference between these joins so cartesian join and cross join are the same so cross join gives a cartesian product of two tables that is the row from the first table is multiplied with another table that is called cartesian product so a cross join without the where clause gives us a cartesian product so this is how connected cartesian join and cross join are now moving on to the next question how does the on delete cascade statement work using this on delete cascade you can automatically delete a record in the child table when the same record is deleted from the parent table so this statement can be used with a foreign key as well so you can use this on delete cascade option on the existing table that you're working on so the syntax or an example to this would be alter the child table that is a t1 and add constraint that is child parent fk references where i'm going to be deleting column one from parent okay so parent t1 column one on delete cascade so this deletes the column one in both child as well as a parent table so this is about the sql questions that will be asked in uh, the interview guys now moving on to the next part we have plsql interview questions so we'll understand them in detail so what is plsql so do you have any idea about what exactly it is how it works and so on so let's figure out what it is so plsql is an extension of structured query language that is used in oracle so it basically combines the data manipulation power of sql with the processing power of procedural language in order to create super powerful sql queries so plsql means instructing the compiler what to do through sql and how to do it through its procedural way so i think you guys have understood what exactly is plsql now moving on to the next question enlist the characteristics of plsql so there are a lot of characteristics of this plsql some notable ones among them are it is a block structured language it is portable to all environments that support oracle plsql is integrated with the oracle data dictionary and stored procedures help better sharing of applications so these are the characteristics of plsql now moving on to the next question what are the different data types that are available in plsql so there are two data types which are available in plsql so they are namely scalar data types and composite data types so scalar data types can be character varchar boolean and so on whereas composite data types can have record table and so on the next question is what are the uses of database trigger so before we understand what are the uses of database trigger let's understand what is a trigger triggers are the programs which are executed automatically when the following events occur it implements complex security authorizations it also drives column values maintains duplicate tables it also implements complex business rules and bring transparency in log events so this is exactly why we use triggers in uh, database operations now the next question is show how functions and procedures are called in a plsql block 
So a procedure can have a return statement in order to return the control to the calling block, but it cannot return any values through the return statement. These procedures cannot be called directly from the select statement, but they can be called from another block using the X keyword that is exe execution keyword, right? So the procedure can be called in these ways. So you can use call specify the procedure name and use direct and also execute procedure name from the calling environment that is the source and the next one would be the procedure name from the other procedures or functions or packages. So this is how you can call a procedure in PLSQL block. Now talking about functions, you can call functions uh, using execute, specify the function name from the calling environment. And note that you should always use a variable in order to get the return value. And also you can call a function using the SQL expression. Now moving on to the next question. What are the two virtual tables that are available at the time of a database triggered execution? So columns are referred as then column name and now column name. So these are the two virtual tables that are available. Now talking about the major operations to be performed that would be insert delete and update. So insert related triggers uses now column name values. Whereas delete related triggers use then column name values and update related triggers uses both table columns. All right now moving on to the next question. What are the major differences between a primary key and a unique key? Okay, so these are the major differences guys talking about a unique key. A table can have more than one unique key. Whereas when you talk about primary key, a table can have only one primary key. A unique key column can store null values and a primary key column cannot store null values. A unique key uniquely identifies each value in a column, whereas primary key uniquely identifies each row in a table. So I think you guys have understood the differences here. Now moving on to the next question. Explain the purpose of type and row type data types with an example. So this percent row type and percent type are the attributes in PLSQL which can inherit the data types of a table that are defined in a database. So the main purpose of using these attributes in Oracle is to provide data independence and integrity. Also do note that if any of the data types get changed in the database that is if in case you alter any of the data types PLSQL codes get updated automatically including the change in the data types. So this is how easy it is to work with SQL. Now talking about the purpose of using person type and person row type person type is used for declaring a variable that needs to have some data type as a table column. Whereas percent row type is used to define a complete row of record having a structure which is similar to the structure of a table. Now moving on to the next question explain the difference between triggers and constraints. So I would like to say triggers are very different from constraints in several ways. So when you use a trigger it only affects those rows added after the trigger is enabled. Whereas when you talk about constraints, constraint affects all rows of the table, including those which were already present when the constraint was enabled. Triggers are used to implement complex business rules which cannot be implemented using integrity constraints. Whereas constraints maintain the integrity of the database. So I hope you guys are clear with this. So another important question is how to handle exceptions in PLSQL. So any database or any programming language or in that matter will have exceptions. So how can you handle exceptions in PLSQL? So when an error occurs in PLSQL, the corresponding exception is raised. This also means that to handle undesired situations where PLSQL scripts get terminated unexpectedly, error handling code is included in the program. So in PLSQL, all exception handling code is placed in the exception section. So there are three types of exceptions in PLSQL. So they namely predefined exceptions, undefined exceptions and user defined exceptions. So predefined exceptions are the common errors with the predefined names, whereas undefined exceptions are less common errors with no predefined names. Talking about user defined exceptions, 
these do not cause runtime error, but it violates business rules. Now I think you guys are clear with this. Now let's move ahead and understand the comparison based interview questions. So if in case there are common features of the same topic, the interviewer would know how you can differentiate between one point to another. So let's so let's take a look at the differences questions that will be asked in an interview. So what is the difference between count count expression and count distinct expression? Star here specifies a number. This returns a number of rows in a table, including the duplicate rows and the rows that contain null values in a column. Next, we have count with an expression. This returns the number of non null values in the column, which are identified by an expression. Next, we have count with the distinct expression. This returns the number of unique non null values in the column that is identified by an expression. The next question is what is the difference between verify and feedback command? So the major difference between uh, verify and feedback commands are so verify command can be used to confirm the changes in the SQL statement which can have old or new values and can be defined with set verify on or off. All right. Now the feedback command displays the number of records that are returned by a query. So this basically displays the number of records. And the next question is list out the difference between commit rollback and save point. So the major difference between these are commit ends the current transaction by ensuring that all pending data changes are made permanent. Whereas rollback ends the current transaction by discarding or deleting all pending data changes and save point divides the transaction into smaller parts. You can roll back the transaction until you find a particular named save point. So this is the difference between commit rollback and save point. Now moving on to the next question we have. What is the difference between substring and in string substring returns a specific portion of a string whereas in string provides the character position in which a pattern is found in a string substring returns a string whereas in strings return numeric values. All right, so this is the difference between these two. Now moving on to the next question point out the difference between user tables and user dictionary user table is a collection of tables that are created and maintained by the user. It also contains user information whereas data dictionary is a collection of tables that are created and maintained by the Oracle server. It mainly contains database information and all data dictionary tables are owned by the SYS that a system user. Now the next question is major difference between truncate and delete. So truncate removes all rows from the table and releases storage space which is used by the table. Whereas delete removes all rows from the table but does not release the storage space that is used by that table. Truncate command is faster when executed and delete command is a little slower. Truncate is a DDL statement and it cannot be rolled back. Now what is a DDL? A DDL is a data definition language. So it is a standard for commands that define the different structures in the database. So truncate is a DDL statement and it cannot be rolled back. Whereas delete is also a DDL statement, but it can be rolled back. The database triggers do not fire on the truncate whereas the database triggers fire on the delete. All right. So the next question is point out the major difference between translate and replace translate is used for character by character substitution whereas replace is used to substitute a single character with a word. All right now moving on to the next question we have what is the difference between dollar Oracle base and dollar Oracle home. So you might have come across this when you were working with Java as well. So when you want to set up the Java path, you would add a few comments, right? In case of Oracle, it is Oracle base and Oracle home. So what are the major difference between these two? So dollar Oracle home is the main or root directory of Oracle. Whereas Oracle home is located beneath the base folder in which all Oracle products reside. Now the next question is what do you understand by redo log file mirroring before we understand what is redo log file we will understand what is mirroring mirroring is a process of having a copy of redo log files. This can be done by creating a group of log files altogether. 
It ensures that the log writer automatically writes it all to the members of the current online redo log group. Now say for example if the log group fails in this case the database automatically switches over to the next group and it diminishes the performance of the database. Okay, so this is about a redo log file mirroring. Now let's move on to the last question of this session. What is the difference between a hot backup and a cold backup in Oracle? A hot backup is also known as an online backup. This is because it takes place while the database is active. Some sites like Messenger and so on can't shut down their database while making a backup copy and they are used 24 7. So this is called hot backup. Now talking about cold backup, cold backup is also called as an offline backup because it is done while the database has been shut down using the shutdown command. If the database is suddenly shut down with an uncertain condition, it should be restarted with restrict mode and then shut down with the normal option. Now say if you want to perform complete cold backup, the corresponding files must be backed up. That is all data files or control files, all online redo log files, everything should be backed up. So this is exactly how cold backup in Oracle works. So with this we come to the end of this uh, video on Oracle interview questions. I hope the set of interview questions will help you guys in preparing for your interviews. So I wish you all the very best from my side and also I hope you guys are clear with everything that has been discussed. If you have any queries or doubts regarding any of the questions that has been discussed, feel free to reach out to us or you can just comment them on the comment section below and we'll get back to you at the earliest. So that's it from my end for this session guys and also uh, do like share and subscribe this video. It would be helpful for people who are looking out for a career in uh, Oracle. So this is Vaishnavi signing off. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!